at like I I kind of wanted we were discussing the heavy hedgehog uh, build and after I kind of threw it on my phone I'm like god damn it I'm playing Dwight today but man do I really want to play the heavy hedgehog <laughs> this is just so ridiculous I do like the heavy hedgehog list. It's so it's just so funny. <laughs> like, yes, the perfect L of evolution. Slap more armor on this fucking pointy like pokey bastard. Um So yeah, I I kinda I, I yeah, I really like your your chariots. Would you would you do a companion cav chariot like I don't know, beam list? Like put it in that tribe or like uh, skew? Yeah, it's. I would. It's. I hesitate to call it a meme because if it if it I works, it's, it's not a meme, right? Like I think it is. Yeah, skew list is more accurate because there are definitely things it will just demolish, right? Uh, I'm gonna play it, and it's one of those lists that I think there are a few things in the game that are just gonna crush it, and like that kind of blows. But any of the, if you run into anything that's not that, you just it's just going to shred you, right? Like, yeah. If, like, if you have a couple of large blocks, then, and you're really relying on scoring with those, and they're like, charge one of my six chariots into you, you don't score this turn, and you're like, oh. And it's 14 activations, so they're just going to, like, last action charge you. Yep. And then what, and, they kill, um... They kill the chariot, walk up to cover the zone, and you do it again next turn? Right, and it feels like you can just... Some lists don't have enough, like, you, regiments to be able to deal with that, right? Like, it's just gonna overwhelm you. Um, and that's pretty nuts, right? Like, that's a pretty big skew. Um, I think that list is strong. I don't know, like... But I hesitate to play things like that uh, competitively because if you do run into another MSU, they might just smash you. Like, um, Nords? Like, if someone's playing, like, Nords yeah. Goblin? Yeah, because, like, you're not very good into that list. And your chariots are not really doing much in combat. They're three hits, right? They're, they're Clash 2 no, with they... six attacks. Like them always having um, take aim just basically says you are a, you're just shooting you're just moving and shooting like that that's your whole job, right? But if something can tie them up, like they're not exciting. No, um, like you can get march charged by raiders and then like the chariot's gonna lose to raiders and that's that's kind of the thing. Um, that's weird about it is if they have enough regiments into that skew list, they're gonna just beat you. And I don't think, and you don't have like enough tools, you don't have enough variety of tools to really deal with that. And that's the problem with skew lists in general. Like you hit a bad matchup and you lose. If yeah. you dodge, like it's great for three round tournaments because a lot of times you'll, you just won't hit your bad matchup. And then you'll be like, ah, yeah. <laughs> but no. when you're going to go to Adepticon <laughs> or something, when you're playing six rounds, you're going to run into something that's hard for you. Yeah, I... I do agree there. Like, I, I played the horse list at Adepticon. I did well, but um, there was one of the big matchups that was actually, like, a huge problem for me was the the Dweg match into Brian. Um, yeah. It also didn't help that he had just played, like, Huckleberry Smash round three and yeah. lost, so he knew exactly everything I was going to do, and it was like, I'm not falling for any of your traps. I'm like, fuck. And he beat a Huckleberry at LVO. Yeah. Um, he so, was... like, he's he has experience against... A lot of Ash and Dawn. A lot of Ash and Dawn. I, <laughs> we were making lists at dinner, and Carl brought out a six, a two by six, Ash and Dawn list, and I'm like, oh my god, this is this is what it's evolving into. You just slap more Ash and Dawn into this thing. Um, I, I made a I made a meme post after Adepticon where it was like two units of Seal Temple and two by nine Ash and Dawn. As, as the ultimate perfection of horse. <laughs> I don't know. I have no yeah. idea. <laughs> like, where the f <laughs> How do you deploy that? It's <laughs> just so many horse. Do you, do you deploy that in a 3x9? Or a 3x3? Three three? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, on this table, I could go uh, basically, like, 
18 across. <laughs> How long is that? I'd have to measure the stands. That's 56. Uh, 5 was 13. So it's about, I would, I would just be able to get nine, uh, 18 stands from the left side of the table, my left, to that house over on the, on, I guess you were left. Okay. <laughs> Truly a, an amazing list. Um, anything else you think we should cover? Um, I don't know. I, I'm going to be playing a lot of city-states uh, coming up because I think that... I think with chariots, um, one of the biggest problems is, like, you just couldn't fit regiments in the faction. And that just meant it was really, really hard to score once stuff stopped dying, started dying. Mm -hmm. And I I think chariots just solved that. I mean, it's, it, being a cheap medium that shoots um, is just great. It's a cheap medium. It also has flank. So you are able to get some mediums on on two if you fail all of your rolls. Obviously, I made all of them this game, but like just the fact that my one one of my big blocks of hoplites comes in supported is really really nice. Yeah. So there's a lot going for it. Right. Yeah, I mean this might be a pretty big advertisement for chariots, but uh, they're they're pretty good. I I like them. I'm. I'm going to take this Dweg list, and I'm going to play it tomorrow in person, so hopefully I'm a little better because I can see things <laughs> more. Uh, yeah, my perspective on tabletop just kind of sucks, but that's a okay. This, is, like, for the, this, for me, is more to, like, learn the fundamentals of a list or into a matchup, so I have an idea of what, what's going on. Um, do, you, do you ever do the, uh, go on to the TTS Conquest Discord and play games there? Um... Not very often. Um, I did for a while, but I haven't had as much time since the move, and then LVO, and then I got sick. Uh, I got I got a fun dose of long COVID, so I've been like, yeah, I it's been like two weeks. Really, it was like the the week before Adepticon that I finally started like being able to talk for periods of time without coughing. No, that's that's good. I I 100% got the con crud. I started to record the Adepticon video. I think on like Tuesday, and I just I got five minutes in. I just stopped and was like, I can't talk. <laughs> this is this is too much. Um, yeah. Um, are you? What other big events are you going to, man? Uh, I'm probably gonna go to Michigan GT in October. Uh, I don't I don't know if there's anything at Nova. I might go to Nova. I might try to go to Nova, which is end of October, uh, end of August. Um, I'm not gonna make Gen Con. Um, it's it's just uh, needlessly expensive and far. Like it's just far enough. It's not as far as Adepticon, but it's not as much fun as Adepticon. Mm. Um, Gen Con's cool, but playing minis at Gen Con is kind of terrible because it's just so busy trying to get models anywhere sucks and it's not set up for that oh, okay because it's it's great to play like rpgs at and um just like try out new games in the dealer hall and things like that but i wouldn't go there like i wouldn't gen if i'm gonna spend the money and the time and the effort to go to gen con I, i'm probably not gonna be competitively gaming there <laughs> um yeah i I feel like if I went to Gen Con, I'd be like, I'm going to learn a bunch of new games and see if I want to pick one up when I get home kind of thing, or bring one home. It, it kind of seems like more of that type of marketing. I, like, Adepticon was my first big convention. I'm glad I went. Like, it was it was really cool. Um, though, I, I would change up how I leave Adepticon. Like, I had a room booked till, like, Monday. Um... Basically, everyone on Sunday bounced, so and then we drove home anyway. So it's like I would have just not booked the room from Sunday to Monday, but I had no idea what was going on, so I just did it. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. So. Um, 
it, it's good to have the availability because some people will stay and then like some people might stay and you might want to you know go get drunk yeah and doing that sunday is pretty good also but we have like a 13 hour drive back and i'm happy that we spent five of it getting to like minneapolis and staying there the night even though it was like hell on hell on the highways driving back um but like if you know if there's weather weather if weather is better um and it was like just calm roads kind of thing i probably would have stopped in minneapolis grabbed myself an energy drink gas up and just driven the rest of the way all the way home and just got home at three in the morning yeah um i probably i think like i don't know i mean it's it's tough like it, it's a long drive i'm i might have i don't know i considered it i i guess i should say it that way did you stay i definitely uh no we were looking at it but uh things happened so our hotel was like doing some repairs and it was fine we walked in there and there just wasn't any wallpaper in our hallway and we're like well that's a little that's a little weird um so then we were gonna stay sunday night but they started putting up the wallpaper and the glue was rough so then we just uh didn't we just left and we ended up like crashing in toledo and then driving the rest of the way home the next day yeah i don't blame you there my um, my hotel changed names from a Days Into a Best Western, and my Expedia booking got, like, bounced. And so I arrived, and we didn't have a reservation or anything, so I had to pay again. Like, they had room, but, like, I had to pay again, and that was very frustrating. Um, and then the there was no, like, continental... Like, there was a continental breakfast, but, like, there was no, just, like, any food, really. So, and there was like no coffee and there was no one like refilling any of this stuff, even after we told them, um, the staff, except for one person was not very helpful at all. It was very like, Oh, I don't know. No. Oh, whatever. Like, could you, could you please do like the minimum amount of service you're required to do for your job, please? So it was super rough and I'm probably never going to go back to that best Western ever again. And I'll just like go to another place. Yeah, I stay. I, so I stayed at the Home Two Suites, um, because it's it's like a mile from the convention center, and it's like a hundred and ten a night. Yeah, and, and I've been pretty happy with it. That's... Or it was this year, like a hundred and ten a night, um, and it was last year. Yeah, like I get hit by the um, like the exchange rate, so it's like uh, I want something decent. So the best restaurant I think was doing seventy five. Uh, the room was nice, like, don't get me wrong, like, the place itself was very nice, um, you could kind of tell they redid everything, like, two weeks before, uh, we got there, so, like, um, everything was really new, like, yeah, really, really new, like, every it was, and it was all nice, so, and I'm not, like, annoyed by that part or anything, it's just the level of service from the staff was just unacceptable, <laughs> like, come on, guys, yeah, um that's uh that's been my experience at basically all hotels these days yeah it, there was also <laughs> they run a skeleton crew and the, they can't handle it no and then there was like a, a two rooms uh beside us were just partying i think like sunday night and they were like opening doors slamming doors or it was saturday i forget what night it was they were just actually it probably was sunday because i was like bound and determined not to stay the night monday because i just wanted sleep um, so they're just like, just, like talking really loud and laughing and slamming doors. And like, I had to get up at like three in the morning and tell them to shut up. Cause it's like, come on guys, I'm trying to sleep here. Like what the fuck? So yeah. 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 I'm just like, oh my God. And I've stayed in like hotels and stuff, but I've also stayed in like small town hotels. So you don't get parties like that at all. It's just like, show up, go to bed, wake up, go to work. Like that that room is literally just a room. It's just a bed and a shower. And that's that's what I treat a lot of hotels as, because if I'm going someplace I wanna be in that place, not in the um in the room. The only time I ever wanna be in the room is like if it's a cabin and I'm going to like some park or something. Or a resort. Yeah. 
that's, that's kind yeah, of yeah. Like... I'm I'm very off of Airbnb type things. So you you do or don't do Airbnb? I don't. Yeah, I I don't do it just because like I don't know what I'm gonna be getting. And yeah, I yeah. only do it if I'm like renting a weekend for something. Yeah, and like um I can also go to like um there's a resort like four hours away. Um, in this national park and we can go there and there's like it you can you know rent out a room in the place rent out like a little uh, chateau or something like that so there's there's plenty there to go and like rent for a weekend or a week or whatever you want to do and then walk into town because it's like a 20 minute walk away yeah so it's it's a lot better um, the the venue itself was actually really good at Adepticon like I, like that convention center is pretty good for it. Yeah, I, I mean, I like I don't have a comment on that. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. great. Like Adepticon is great. <laughs> um, so I guess I have to go and plan Michigan GT. And I'll, yeah, I'll you there. do. Yeah, you gotta show up there. Fuck. Um, also, like, I I made a video, and I think I shot a message up to, like, the Michigan crew, where I thanked them for, like, taking care of us, and it was, like, super nice. Just being, just being picked up and being like, you eat with us tonight, and it's like, okay, <laughs> thank you. I have no idea what the <laughs> hell any of this is. <laughs> I don't live here. Um, yeah, like, if you guys ever came to Winnipeg, I would 100% be like, alright, this is where we're going. Um... <laughs> Every every place is basically like there's no freeway, so you're basically just taking like residential streets everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's just gonna be like kind of weird. Yeah, um, it's very different from the like get on the one road and drive in a direction. Oh oh yeah, like if you ever decide to drive into Canada, you'll hit that one road and be like, wow, we just go straight, and you're like, yep. <laughs> This is why I'm very comfortable driving everywhere, because nothing yeah. happens. So, it was actually like a really good drive going down to Adepticon, because it was literally the same type of road. We just was like, you just get on this thing, you go. Yup. So, <laughs> that's, I mean, that's, yeah, that's how, that's like Route 66. I mean, there's a few, like, there's a bunch of those highways in the U.S. because we're tall. And, you know, the northern part of us isn't, like, a snow-covered wasteland. It, yeah. You know, all of the year. It is some of the year. <laughs> oh, man. it's There's a bit of me what's like, oh, yeah, we'll just take a trip to Churchill. You'll be like, D dude, what is this? I'll be like, this is the bog. You will see this for the next four to six hours. I hope you enjoy. And it's literally just a bog. <laughs> as you drive through it all. Yeah. So it's pretty yeah. Cool. <laughs> I mean, that's basically like driving through the middle of like if you're if you drive from like Iowa to Ohio, there is nothing. It is cornfields. It's not a bog, but it is cornfields. Where did I drive? Like you hit cities and then you hit cornfields. Google Maps. I did a drive. It's Seattle's Washington, if I recall. Yeah. So. Uh, where is the saddle? Yeah, if you did that drive, at least you went through, like, Montana, which is fucking gorgeous. Yeah, we did go through Montana. Uh, it's one of my favorite states in the whole country to drive through. Went through Washington, went through Idaho, got into Montana, and then we turned into... We went kind of through the mountains a little bit, and basically... We yep. just got a little bit into like British Columbia and then into Alberta Basically, oh you went back north a little bit yeah so we went through the mountains there and then we were like we're not going through the mountains again <laughs> <laughs> so we went like Seattle Spokane um, then I think we went northward from Spokane uh, to like Kings Gate uh, like 95 yeah you're 95 I don't know what the fuck this is and then we went through there and came out and then just like shot across the southern half of Alberta, what is the Badlands, so it's just a dust bowl and just cattle and then got to Medicine Hat, back onto Highway 1 and shot across Highway 1 all the way back home, but if I had to go again, especially for the winter, if someone was like, oh, we got an event in like Seattle in the winter, I'm like, 
I'm going through the US. Fuck these mountains. I'm not doing them in the winter. I I live in a world that is perfectly flat. At any moment you guys are at elevation, I'm fucked. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Canada. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> uh, Minneapolis. Oh, wow. That's where I drove. Okay, so where are you guys? There's Grand Rapids. Are you guys in Grand Rapids? Oh, yeah, there's Michigan. Look at that. I mean, I'm I'm in North Carolina. Yeah, you, you're not a real person. We both know that. I am, like, I am over by Washington, D.C. is, like, oh. the closest major, major city. There's and Delaware. It's, like, a couple hours north of me. There's Maine. You're not in Maine. North Carolina. South Carolina. Okay, so you're over there. Because yep. you have an ocean view, right? Yeah, I'm on the sound technically, but I can see the ocean on the other. Like, I can see the island that touches the ocean. Oh, okay. <laughs> you have water. But, body. like, I'm on water. I'm just. It's just kind of a lake. It's like a oh, saltwater lake. You did have quite a drive. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, where's Michigan GT coming out of? Is that in Grand Rapids? Or is that Detroit? Ooh. Uh, it's in Lansing, which is like a little bit south of Detroit, maybe a little north. It's like an hour from Detroit. I don't know. If, I think it's still faster if we drive. It's still faster if we drive through the U.S. Is it? I thought it was going to be faster to go straight over and then straight down. No, because we have to loop because you have to go across um, the northern half of all five Great Lakes. Then come into Toronto, and then Toronto, Hamilton, uh, London, all the way into Detroit. Like, you gotta loop all the way in. It's actually faster if you go... Um, okay. Winnipeg, Fargo, all the way to, like, Minneapolis, Chicago, and then to Detroit. It's way better. Oh, look at that. Chicago's on a lake. Huh. I feel like I used to know where everything was, and then as I did not need to use it anymore, I totally forgot. Yeah, we might... I feel like we might just fly and then just take a rental. <laughs> like, just get a rent-a-car at that point. Like, I don't mind the drive to Adepticon. That one was not bad, because it's the same amount of time it takes me from Winnipeg to Chica uh, Calgary. And I didn't mind that drive at all, but yeah, it's starting to get far. But at some point, I would like to get a game in to you with in person. Yeah, at some point we'll have to play. Yeah, your your perception's too good on Tabletop Simulator. That's obviously why I'm not winning. Yes, that's got to be it. Uh, I do pre-measure more things on Tabletop Simulator. <laughs> do you have a set of sticks you use? Or do you just use the tape measure? I just use the tape measure. I pre-measure a ton of stuff. Even when I'm playing, like, in real life. Yeah, um, I'm. I don't even pull. Like I just use the sticks all the time. It's just I like the precision of them. There's no. Yeah, there's, I don't have them. Yeah, they're not that expensive. Just get you. Yeah, I know. I just don't like carrying them around. Do you not have an extra slot in your bag to put them in? I do, but like they just take up all the table space. I don't know. I did. I never used them back mm -hmm. when I did have them because I did have them when I played War Machine. Um, and I still almost always use the tape measure. I would only pull them out if, like, it was really, really close, like, charge distances. Yeah. But it was so rare that it actually came up. I, I just ended up doing all my measurements, me, with the sticks to the, where I'm like, no, oh, okay, 10. It also helped that I played lists that were all the same speed. So it was just, yeah. like, dip, 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 done. Um... Yeah, I, I did not find it hard at all. Like, Conquest I don't find hard. My only issue is, like, when you move a regiment, especially if you're, like, a tray which has three of them, sometimes you'll, like, as you're moving it, like, one end will wiggle in or out. So, like, one end's in while the other end is kind of, like, wiggled forward or back a little bit more just due to you picking them up and putting them down again. Yeah, I tend to pre-measure, like, where they're going to be and then, like, put a card to men like, when it matters. Yeah. Obviously, if I'm just sliding stuff forward, like, it doesn't doesn't really change the game that much if you're off by, like, an eighth of an inch or whatever. Yeah, I I do agree. I just, I've seen so many players, like, 
fuck it up pretty good. I'm just like, oh, whatever. Just pass. Stop looking at it. <laughs> it's, I don't know. It's it's tough sometimes just because, like, I, I work in an industry where it's like, you must be precise on all your measurements because we're building stuff. And then I'm just like, oh, man. Playing a, a measuring game, I'm like, oh, fuck. I have to be precise on all my measurements or it's going to bother me. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, I like Tabletop Simulator for that. I really like that it gives you the the precision. Yeah. Um, like, I like that it'll tell me the exact number of inches away I am. Yeah, I, I do love the... Especially the for charges. Like, oh, yeah. There's... But most of the time you can just agree, right? You're like, all right, I want to go to exactly eight inches away from you. And they're like, cool we good you know if you have the movement obviously yeah you measure no. it at the start and then you say and you say your intention and i don't know i've never even at like very high level competitive events i've never had somebody try to game it when like we agreed on the intention oh yeah we both knew how far away i was so then like nobody is gonna actually like fight that no i I agree. I'm always like, hey, this is my intent. I want to be like 16.1 just out. And they're like, yep, cool. I'm like, thanks. And then just keep going. It doesn't... Yep. does not take very long just to talk through all the things you're doing. Because um, I find a lot of players will just like start doing stuff. And then you're like trying to follow along and they start doing weird shit. And you're like, okay, what the fuck are you trying to do? Like, Yeah. Like, okay, suddenly you're wheeling. Now you're wheeling back. Now you're reforming like you you're just sitting there like what, what are you doing i'm like i'm marching i'm reforming okay now i'm gonna be shooting this unit to this unit or like you know whatever but i just keep that uh flow of communication going so if there's any time anyone's like hey you're doing something wrong it's like oh okay thank you let me correct that yeah like when i when i clashed your thing and then charged you're like you didn't inspire and i was like i can't and you're yep. like oh right phalanx yeah. But otherwise, like, you gotta announce that stuff. Even if you roll it without the without the numbers, like, people might not catch that. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, I'm rolling, I was like, alright, hitting on twos, and then you, like, charge afterwards, and they're like, didn't you inspire? I was like, no, otherwise I would've been hitting on threes, and sometimes they're like, okay. But they might, but like, you don't want to do that, because people will... And, and you don't want other people doing that to you. No. Um, because you ha you, when somebody's about to do to, about to roll and they say hitting on twos, you're like, not inspiring? Like, you should clarify. Because people will do, like, it's an easy way to cheat, and I don't want people to cheat. No. Um, but it happens, and it's a really easy way to be like, oh man, I rolled like four threes, so I inspired. <laughs> you know, you just like the hit, the threes hit, and then they're like they they'll just pick up the dice and roll them without saying the hit number, and then if they didn't roll any threes, they'll be like, I didn't inspire, you know. Yeah, and then um, they get their and, second action, do whatever, you know, whatever else. But it's like, yep, just talk, just be like, inspire yeah, the threes. Just use your words. Yeah, like, like it's it's not clarify hard. things. Always just use your words, and you will have a better time playing the game. Yeah, there. Um, I I played it at one point when I was playing Peter. He just started rolling dice, and I'm like, I tried. I I lost what was going on because he like rerolled. I'm like, okay, what like what's going on? And he was like, oh, sorry, man. And I'm like, no, no, it's okay. It's just just walk me through it because I did not. I like I lost what step he was at on like. Yep. Was he rolling his defense rolls? Was he rolling his blessed rolls? Does was he rolling his resolve? Was he re-rolling his resolve because he was on the side? Like, what step were you on? Because I'm not like auditing a guy or anything. It's just I'm. Sometimes people miss stuff. I miss stuff. I think one time I rolled a bunch of dice and it was like, oh, you got a five in there. I'm like, oh, you know, sorry, let me pull that out. Here you go. And they're like, yep. Yeah. Like shit happens. Um, yeah. He got me because I charged. Um, through hindering terrain, I'm like, alright, I'm gonna do 15 impacts, and I picked up all the dice, and he's like, you went through terrain, I'm like, oh shit, sorry, put those down. I will yep. then clash. He's like, um, he's like, oh, did you use, I thought you used your bless on your attacks. I was like, no, I just clashed, because there's no reason to use the bless on the attacks, because it's Ash and Dawn versus Ash and Dawn. 
Um, so I just rolled fours. I didn't roll fours re-rolling sixes because I went through, uh, through hindering. Like, But it's just that level of communication. Like, There are times where I fail it, but because I have an open, board, open line of communication with my opponent, we can catch each other and play a good, clean game. That's right, yeah, as long as you're talking through things, if... If somebody's like, what are you rolling, Then and you explained it, they're like, oh, you don't get that, and you're like, oh, right. Because yeah. everybody makes mistakes, or like isn't paying attention, or it might be like, oh, I thought that was only obscuring terrain, you know, yeah. or I thought it was broken obscuring and not hindering, or whatever. Yeah. Um, and actually, I mean, at LVO, that came up between uh, Deco and I, like I charged through a wheat field, um, cause it was a, you know, 2D terrain, right? Um, and I was like, and he was like, you uh, so he mentioned impacts and I was like, I thought these were hindering. And he's like, no, I think they're just, uh, they're just obscuring. And I'm like, okay. I mean, I was going to take my impacts, but I like had gotten the terrain wrong or maybe he, like he had played at a different table and like my first round opponent. Um, my first round opponent, we just played everything as forests, basically. No, if it was God. a zone. Um, and then, but like, you know, whatever. And then, the so then I played against, uh, Deco, and we were, you know, he was like, it's not, it didn't matter. I, I got completely and utterly tabled in that game, but I was ahead by, like, 45 points on turn 7 when he tabled me. Technically, I had one avatar stand left with two wounds that was running away to a corner yeah it doesn't matter <laughs> it's like... um but i won the game by like 30 because i had gained such a huge scoring lead by being way faster yeah. uh it's the problem with the fireforge spam lists like they will probably table you but they have a good chance of like losing on points before they do yeah, I'll probably play that list at some point. I'm not excited to build more Fireforge. I built one box, and I'm like, uh, fuck. <laughs> I'm gonna go do something else. So, um, there's gonna be a bunch of proxying tomorrow, and I am A-OK -okay with as I slowly build everything. Um, yeah, I... I don't know. Maybe, maybe for content, I should just make an etiquette video. Where it's like, here is some more gaming etiquette you can do. This will help you and your opponent. Like, PSA videos seem to just do well. It's just everyone can learn from that stuff or get refreshed by it. Yeah. So. Yeah, it, it never hurts. It never hurts to talk about. And there's just, like, some of that etiquette stuff happens at higher tables and people just, like, don't do it in their more casual games because they just don't know like you know you experience it in a tournament you're like oh man this is really helpful and makes the game better and then you do it all the time like one of the things i did um and this is like a really old holdover from like playing war games for so long is when someone's like there's four feet across from us and when someone's stuff is like in on my side or closer to me and they want to do a thing i'm like hey may i touch your minis and do that movement yeah. for you. But I never, like, just touch their minis. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I ask them. Right, yeah, never just grab somebody's stuff. Yeah, like, that's that's a big one. Um, like, I know Leandris is setting up a table, and he, like, went to pick up my big-ass tray, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> that's... I don't really care if people touch my minis, but now you're touching the whole tray, and I'm like, yeah, I don't need, a, like, something to happen where they go yeah. flying. Like, if you picked up one or two and it went flying... Okay, whatever. But like, the, I'm like, okay, not the entire tray. <laughs> little, little more over there. That's a, uh, that's a lot more glue, and I don't want to do. Um, yep. But a lot of times, like for me, it's very fine if people touch their minis. I don't hold that much um, value to them. If there's something I painted really well as a display piece that's sitting at home or in a, like in a glass display case at the event, it's not something I'm okay with people touching. Um, while other people depending on how their paint job, how they feel about their minis, they might be more concerned, and just asking every time just puts that out, because I don't know if someone's, like, okay with half their stuff being touched while not certain things being touched. You just ask. Um, and it's kind of like a one of those... It's like a positive habit you build after a while. Yep, yeah. I mean, that's just... <sighs> 
that's general respect for humans, though. Like, I'm not gonna touch your shit without you <laughs> being cool with it. Well, but it definitely. <laughs> um, no, not for some people. <laughs> I'll tell you I, that. I, I know that it's it, okay. I guess I should have said should be. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> some people just touch shit, and it's like, okay, what are you doing? Yeah, it's like, please, please don't do that. Like sometimes, sometimes I just want to know that you're touching my shit. Yep. Like, like if some some random kid comes up because I've had this happen and just like grabs my mini, it's like, okay, dude, what the fuck? Yep. If some kid comes up to me and says, hey. I would like to see that closer. Can I touch it? I'm like, yeah, here. Here you go, kid. And then they run yeah, off anyway. <laughs> I I definitely saw a a youth um shatter a Warhammer Fantasy Dragon oh in God. the middle of a tournament. Like they these are old metal minis. Yeah, that's And this thing dumb. was like 10 parts at, like 10 pieces made out of metal and a kid like went to grab it and his hand like clipped the wing. And it knocked it straight on the floor, and it just shattered into, like, all of its original parts. And it was, like, pretty well painted, and the guy, like... But, so the Wood Elf player, like, oh, played no. the rest of the tournament with, like, it... He glued <laughs> its legs, the leg pieces, <laughs> back on the stand, and was, like, on, like, on its face. It was like, oh, okay, guess I'll play the tournament with this. Like, he was cool about it, because it was a kid, but, like... That sucked. Yeah. If... The, yeah, there's... There's been, like, horror stories. Uh, especially from, like, Warhammer, just because of they have such a huge... Like, such a... Just... Sorry, I'm just stumbling on my words. Um, they have such a, a larger, higher... more. They have more players, so there's more shit happening. Um, it did happen every once in a while in War Machine. And, you know, Conquest, I don't really hear that much about it. But... There would be players after they played a game, they'd be like, oh, shake hands, good game. And then uh, another player, as they're packing up, would just grab another guy's minis and just like drop it on the ground. It's like, what the fuck, dude? Yep. Like, but you get that as you have more people part of your whatever game system you're playing. Um, and you just, just gotta communicate. Um, yep. Yeah, there, communication's big. I am planning on doing a series about, like, list building, because I do yeah. feel like there's a lack of awareness about, like, I think a lot of times people just put stuff in the list that's good, and it's like, your list needs to have set components, like, you need to have a goal, first off, and I, I think I'm going to do, like, be able to do this with City States, because I have four lists that I'm going to play on my channel, um over the next hopefully four weeks uh life's hard but <laughs> oh i get you. um um and get them published and they're all very different and each one of them is like okay i want to use i want to use this thing right like this list was i want to build off of the standard double block uh that city states have been known for since i wanted up to come last year with them congratulations right? you set a trend <laughs> um, I mean, it was the only viable option because the army's been frankly abysmal. Um, but phalanges, it, though, or phal whatever the fuck they're called, <laughs> keep calling. Yeah, them. phalangites. I mean, yeah, they're the phalanges, <laughs> especially bad. Um, I they're they're okay now just because they're the same price as hoplites, but I still wouldn't use them. They're just not gonna get there. I don't know. They need they need something to feel unique. But whatever. We're gonna gloss over that. So city states were not in a good place when I won Adepticon with them last year. Mm, uh, I no. think I won largely on surprise because people hadn't played against them. So they got charged by Thyrians and they're like, "Ooh, cleave three line breaker." I guess my unit's dead. Um, and like I caught a lot of people off guard with that, and they weren't really like prepared for for how much damage the hoplites did with like the architects of cities three like impact hits part of the gambit so because people hadn't seen it before um and my positioning like was good enough that i wasn't getting flanked because my positioning like because that's really the key yep. getting flanked is you know, in this game, I got shot in the flanks a bunch, and my units died. And if you don't get attacked in the flank, 
uh, you don't really die. But, like, Pyroclast Auto does that, so I don't really have a tool. No, it's just four hits, and if you're tenacing off one each time, it does reduce it. Right, but, like, if it was, Fire you know, blade. if I was saving on threes, because it was in the front and it was AP1, you know, like, <laughs> Much I would... The four hits, I'd, I'd take, like, one each time instead of taking three each time. Um, and, you know, that's a half a stand each each cast, so it's a full stand a turn. And stuff adds up. And so, like, and Pyroclast wasn't at Adepticon last year. Um, so you, you know, I took hits from stuff like, I took a flame wall in the face, but... Defense four. But, yeah, it was defense four. And I had Tenacious, and I rolled well, and I think I, you know, I took, like, 14 hits, but I took, like, three wounds or something. And then they were like, uh-oh. Yeah. And then I killed their unit. Um, and I, I mean, I beat Chuck, this year's Adepticon champion, by charging into his, uh, fire, his, uh, his Warlord unit, because his Warlord was in Hold Ballista, and I charged him with Thyrians. And you can't you can't use elemental power tokens when you're saving on zeros. So the Thyrians were like, those guys die, and he was like, but I have all these tokens, and I'm like, and they do nothing, and he's like, oh god, and yeah. he didn't know that. Uh, he didn't like he was surprised by the you know cleave three line breaker picking up a unit um, with no saves. So <laughs> so you know that wasn't great either. <laughs> For him, obviously. Um, so I got I got some surprise moves off uh, that people just weren't really ready for, and the, the it was like in a new edition of the game, so the meta wasn't as well developed. No, there. As time has gone on, people have like figured out what is good, and it just yeah. kind of keeps showing. Um, it also helps that there are players who are winning big cons with things that are good and people are going wow this is actually good and it's like yes yes it is um you just needed you basically just needed evidence that it was well and part of it is like what i was going to when i started i'm getting tired so i'm kind of brain know, I probably let you go to bed brain scramblies um but <laughs> where i started with that is you go into a list with a plan. This list was like, all right, I want to run two big blocks of hoplites and really just try to keep things off the chariots and the solenoid and just plink away. Like nothing's going to be that exciting damage output wise, but it's just going to grind through and I have to try to outlive things. And I, I played into what is very likely the worst possible matchup for me. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> Fireforge and Drakes and Pyroclast all just grind very well. Um, so I, I actually felt really good about that. I, other than Nords, Nords are just kind of busted. Um, no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're very Nords, good. They're able to put too many things on the table too effectively. But so that was the plan of this list, right? And like, and it was like, okay, I'm gonna have two big blocks, and I'm gonna try to have two big blocks with Tenacious. You know, I'm not always going to have Tenacious on the RS Arches block, but it's when it does, it's also going to have Untouchable, and that'll help. Um, so they both should be pretty hard to kill. Uh, and it won't hurt me that much if I don't win priority, and, you know, things like that, right? So that was kind of the, the plan. And then, you know, like I talked about um, the Six Chariot skew list, so we talked about skew list a little bit. I was like, all right, I want to just jam six chariots in the list. I, I thought about trying to put nine in, but I really felt like I wanted more tools than just running like nine chariots. But I mean, like you said, there is the 11 chariot list, and I don't know, maybe it's good enough just because it's, it's so many tools. I could send it to you. It's pretty stupid. I'm, it's not hard. It's two hippies and four units of companion cab and then chariots until you're out of points. Yeah. <laughs> you don't really need to send anybody that list. <laughs> you smash that cherry button until it breaks. <laughs> yep, you smash the cherry button until it breaks. And yeah, it's going to be like 11 chariots or maybe 10 um, if you want to upgrade your hippies, which... You don't. They're good. <laughs> I don't... Like, 
Atalanta's is really good, and uh, the the lightsaber on the other one is also really good, and it's good to have those like that cleave four tool somewhere. Yeah, but like you're putting the the iffies on um, companion cab, and companion cab do not live. I have, but they are move eight. They are so you're gonna get you're gonna get that one charge after somebody charged into a chariot, and that character will kill something until you have sealed temple charge into the iffies and or the companion cab and just rip through them. You're like, okay, so that should literally never happen. Well, that's what happened round one. You okay? Well, what I did that to a guy. All right, I mean, it shouldn't happen because there should be chariots blocking them. Oh, okay, cool. (laughs) Like. You should always, like, you have chariots. <laughs> yeah, sack a chariot. It's fine. Exactly. Uh, well, he was just running one unit companion cab with a bunch of just stuff, and I was like, all right, cool. I can work this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that list is, like, it's so wide. It's just so many units, because it's just so many chariots, that you're like, all right, well, I'm just going to have all my companion cab hanging behind these chariots. Do the companion and cab score zones while the chariots run around? Is that is that the new Basically, yeah. I think that yeah, I guess that's how you play that. Yeah, and then, and the, also and they, then they, all just, have they just counter charge. Yeah. Holy fuck, you have like fucking eleven chariots on turn two? Like Jesus. Yup. Yeah. And no. and when they're tar- charging things in the flank, they get terrifying and like the the cav get it. Like it's it's a good skew list. Like No, if- you have to play it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not going to play that version, because, like... You want to win? <laughs> I, I don't think that it's actually as good. But, like, 6 is good. I, I think the 6 list is, like, has enough other tools that it might actually be competitive. Um, and that's kind of where I like putting my skew lists. Uh, I, I'm unwilling to run something that's just pure spam. What are you talking about? I ran all horse. That's different, though. Like, you weren't, you know, you were two, you weren't doubling up, uh, you weren't three or or more of any unit. No, that is true. I did, I did have a decent curve worked out for reinforcements and also had a variety of different horses for different things. Yeah. And that's like, that's like a big difference. It's a really big difference. Um, it's, it's important to put together, okay, here are the things that make the list. And then build around that for things that you need answers to and then fill out your points with like then you look at your remaining points and you're like okay well this will be better against these things or on this scenario and like do i want to shore up the ones i'm a little stronger on or do i want to like fill in the weak points because sometimes it doesn't make sense to fill in weak points sometimes you're so bad against something that you're like well dodge i'm just wasting points like i have to hope that i don't run into you know too many of those yeah you like just, I, you this dodge. list of like I have to not run into quad fireforge like quad fireforge just tears me up yeah i i'm glad how i played like not you know i learned from this play and i'm happy i did this um because it gives me a really good idea like how to adjust the play to be better um what's good But for your list, um, you're going to be doing your four games, and you're going to be doing your list building of those four lists. Are you going to have list building episode, game, list building episode, game? Like, you're going to be, like, doubling up on them? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I've already built the lists, so I'm probably going to do an episode. I think it's just going to kind of be list building 101, and I'm going to use these as examples. But I'm going to really try to talk about, like, army list shells. Mm-hmm. and, like, what things you need to cover to build a list, right? Yeah. Like, what do you need... Like, what does your list need to do? And what does it need to be able to do? No, that's fair. Um, Yeah, because, like, I'm... I know for myself, I'm very much of a, a skew or, like, a tribal player if I can do that. So if there's, like, hey, you can run... Like, I did with fucking horse. Like, I also do with gun lines because it's easy to do, and it just, like, oh, thematically, this makes, like... Not thematically, but you could just do it really easily. You don't have to put that much thought into it. Um, so doing good lists is actually like a skill in itself. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you're doing that just because like, I'll, I could even need that. Like I, I want it. 
because <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'll learn from this. This is great. I'm, ex I'm excited for your content, Ben. I, I mean, I hope these ones turn out well. Like, I know that there's been a lot of discussion. I get a lot of questions for list advice, of course. So, um, I want people, like, building their own lists. Uh, this kind of came because Carl and I were talking about he's he's gonna try Sovereign Lineage for a little bit. And he was like trying different variations and I was like, well, here's like 1630 points which gets you all of the core things that make the list work. And then there are a lot of places you can go with that. Like you can try to be more spammy and add like three units, you know, because you have like 300 and um, 70 points left over. Uh, so you can go, like, strict, you know, double strict onslaught drones or something and fill those points with more, like, little stuff. Or you can go do one big unit of, like, Leon and Avatara when they come out, or... He's super um, excited for those. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for those, too. Uh, but, like... You know, you, there's a lot of options, right? You mm. could do two units of Superior Creations Vanguard clones. You could do two units of Avatara. You could do what I did, which is um, Incarnate or uh, Centaur Avatara and Onslaught drones. Um, you know, there's just a lot of a lot of places where you can like find more options. Yeah. Um, and actually, yeah, there there was actually like 430 points because there were a couple of regiments that had extra stands. But his plan was he wanted to run a big block of brute drones with the Pharaomancer, so he wanted to run five. So like we were messing with that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that I don't think that regiment is correct in Sovereign Lineage. I think it's only really good in Underspire. Uh, the extra yeah. healing is what makes it work. But he's got to shift from Underspire to Sovereign Lineage, like... Right, I just think he should run the MSU Brute Drones with it. Um, it kind of, like... I do like 100k list building, because a lot of the power of 100k comes from the list building. But yeah. Ash and Dawn currently is just, like, the easy button. It is, yeah. And, like, that's why I'm trying to get away just from 100k in general, because I'm like, I need to just be away from Ash and Dawn. Um, maybe I'll go back at some point to 100k like after a couple months I'm not sure yet but it's really like I there I do like 100k because there's a lot of options and things are just good but it's just when one thing is the obvious pick it's tough to get away from if you want to win games and it's like well I want to win games so I'm just gonna grab the obvious thing and fuck around yeah and it's just like fuck Ash and Dawn are one of those units that's really, really hard because against top tier players, they know what they're doing against them. Yeah. But they're still good. Yep. Right? Like, if the you... list you played today is good against Ash and Dawn. Yeah, I know. I lost Brian... to it. <laughs> Brian still lost to Andrew, Huckleberry Smash. Um, because he made a mistake and overextended his uh, Flame Berserkers. And, like, and he beat that list at LVO, like I said. So he knew what he was doing, he knew what to play into, but it's good enough that a mistake can still cost you. Yeah. And he has the tools. Like, Dwegum has the best tools for dealing with Ash and Dawn. Yeah. Like, AP shooting is some of the best tools. Yep, it's AP shooting and magic, and is the best a lot of hindering terrain. Mm -hmm. like yeah. The ability to create hindering terrain is relevant. Like, it's funny. Um, yeah, I just like I want to get away from like yeah. I just need to get away from Ash and Dawn. It's been too much. I do like we're talking about the heavy hedgehog list, and I'm just like, fuck, man. I should just go back to hedgehog and just play around with that for a while and just. I think also learning that will just make me a better player, because then I'm not relying on the Ash and Dawn, I'm actually just relying on my better movement and positioning. That's a huge part of this game. So Yeah, positioning is ultimately the, the most important part of the game. Yeah, there's... It'll, it'll be good. Um, I'll...
I don't know, I'll, I'm gonna upload a 100k, like, shooting breakdown, as well as the magic, but in that episode I talk about, like, what I'm doing next, and I'm, like, gonna talk about the general infantry in 100k, and then let's talk about lists and, like, combined arms and, like, different skews, but also, like, what you can do with 100k, because there is a lot, was one of the things I really like about the faction. Like, Dwag feels yeah. very forced into you will be taking a Tempered Sorcerer if you want to win games. Well, not... Sorry, if you don't want to win games, if you want to do very well at a high level, you're kind of forced to take a Tempered Sorcerer, and it just super restricts what you can do with Dwag. I I feel like the Ardent Creed and, like, the, the Hold Ray, um, who sort of has Hold Creed built into his supremacy because he doesn't get a Creed... Uh, like, Ray's good. Yeah. It is good. Like, the scoring that it provides is very strong. And it might compete with Tempered in a lot of ways. Yeah, it's just... But... Shit, shit ticket go burr. <laughs> um, yeah, but, like... Scoring's not... Fun like score making your stand score isn't like a fun or cool ability. It doesn't feel like a cool warlord ability. One, one of the things like looking at Dwag and just the tempered sorcerer, and then I'm like, why don't they just take the token mechanic and just make it kind of the army rule for each of the different characters and creeds? Like they all play and manipulate with tokens in some way and just be like, you are the faction that plays with tokens on top of your nonsense. I mean, yeah, there's there's a lot of options. I don't go into that one. That's where, like, that's where game designers do game design. I've, I've talked about this a fair amount, like, with playtesting in general, but from my perspective, my job as a playtester is to say, one, if something's not working, two, if something's working too well, and then I suggest, like, maybe a special rule here or there, but primarily point or stat adjustments. Like, this has one too many attacks, or this has one too few attacks. Um, things like that. Yeah. But when we're talking about, like, full redesign for, like, an army rule... That, that's a Leo problem. Yeah, I mean, and, yeah. and it should be. Like, that's Leo's vision, and it's working, like, it's gonna work... He's going to have to talk to Stavro about it, and there's going to be a lot going on um, where they have to make it fit the lore, they have to make sure it's not too much mental load for the players. And that That's where a full-time game designer should be designing, right? Like, it, it, you know, playtesters can be like, this unit's 10 points under-costed or over-costed or whatever. That's pretty easy to, to playtest out. And it's like, and like a lot of players, just by playing the game enough, will figure that out like there's stuff where i'm like hunter cadre you're trying to do it all you're kind of pricey if you want to make them competent you got to be like 195 but you're not really like worth it at a point so it's kind of like you're like there i find stuck in a little bit of a trap of you you are you are worth it if you're both getting your shooting and melee out of it but you're not if you're doing only one of them and most of the time yeah. you're only doing one of them so but you can't price a unit like that as if you're only getting one of those two things from melee and shooting. So they're hybrid, really hybrid regiments and conquests are in kind of a rough spot, just in general. It's very yeah. difficult to be a hybrid regiment in an alternating activation game because you're probably going to be doing one thing. Yeah, and the, the regiments that do well succeed at their one job very well. Like yep. Fireforge, shoot gun, Hellbrain Drake, shoot gun. Temple yep. sorcerer shoot magic like yep <laughs> you don't yeah you don't really like expect them to get melee shit done um so uh, and yeah the rest of it's like okay i yeah like like even just looking at inquisitors i'm just gonna go back to them like i they should drop points <laughs> they should drop like 20 points probably like really easy for what they're doing like, do they need more? I have no idea, but, like, play the game enough, I can look at it and be like, yeah, you're you're overcost for what you're doing. Yep. Um, it's not... I don't know, if, like, one of the funny... Like, I've talked to Leandris before, and I'm like, 
Um, it's, it's very humbling and very kind of him to actually, like, watch the content I make. And it's, like, very... I'm like, oh, thank you. Um, but it's never, like, when I make content to be like, mm, I'm gonna manipulate Leandros. It's like, it's never like that. It's just like, this is what's going on. He gets... Yeah. He, have, he gets free playtesting in a video he can watch himself. Like... Yeah, I have no... It's probably, I have like, no interest or need to, yeah. like manipulate anybody like i will <laughs> i will give actual information and people can do with it as they choose like yeah i've i've gotten a lot of you know you when you put any content out there you're gonna get feedback on it right and i've gotten some feedback on like things i should do differently or whatever and i'm like ultimately i'm making i'm making content that i want to make for people like me because i make the content i make is what i want to consume yeah it's, it's why i do it it's why i do it the way i do it because it's very you can kind of just have it up on your screen when you paint a mini while you i don't know, play a video game you can look over at it like get an eye like, oh he's there okay that's what's going on cool keep listening yeah um, and i mean i want to put out like i want to i've want to give a lot of exposition i want to talk about mistakes i want to talk about positioning i want to get into like the mechanics of the game played competitively right like this is this is how we are trying to play the game well yeah. i'm not i cannot compete with like play on tabletop no for making the game like fun those guys like that's their have job. all the energy they have production value of course but like they have the personalities and they are great i love watching their stuff they have the personalities to to make the game like look fun to play mm -hmm. and to draw you in but you're not seeing competitive conquest right like you're not you're <laughs> no. not learning how to play the game well from them you're enjoying watching them have fun play a game and I I want my games to be like this is what this is what the game looks like. If you want to get into this game and you want to play it seriously, you should watch this content because you'll get a much better idea of what games look like at a higher level. Yeah. Would would you say this is a high level game? I feel like I made some blunders. <laughs> I mean, you made blunders, but blunders happen at high level everything, right? Like yeah. You didn't, you know, you didn't do anything Stupid. egregious. No. Yeah, like, you, you spread out a little bit too much, and you kind of tricked yourself with a cute play with Fire Floor with the Fire Forge in the corner. Um, but ultimately, like, I won a flank and I turned it. Yep. And I did the and I had the opportunity to do that because my Haspists threatened your other flank enough that you overcommitted there yep i agree and like that's i mean that's conquest right like that's just a game if you don't overcommit on that other flank then maybe the haspis turn that one um and i still might like hold up on this flank so that's the that's the part that's hard yeah i it's like i should have sat with my flame berserkers um over the lip of my zone got my drakes into a better position and just kind of unloaded into you kind of forcing you to come to me i feel would have been a better play yeah i i think the biggest thing you ran into was when those flame berserkers moved up my uh my chariots just got to shoot them yeah and i didn't really like you didn't really have anything coming back into me yeah, no, I should have like forced one Drake you. got to shoot into the hoplites after they charged the flame berserkers, but you took a lot of hits on those flame berserkers before, yeah, anything good happened. And that's um, I should have covered them better with my shooting options. Yeah, so at least yeah, like, if, if I'm reaching out to touch it. them, you need to be able to like shoot back at the chariots or shoot back at the thyrians or, you know or the hoplites like you need to be doing damage and i got free damage out and that's kind of what happens in the game like yeah if somebody's getting a couple of free turns of damage you're probably gonna lose like <laughs> i you know what? i probably should just like oh no do the line thing hot or 
flame uh, fire was it flame berserker block there flame berserker block there and just kind of like I don't know have them in the way but further back so you have to come closer for me to shoot you yeah the problem with this one is the solenoid actually we're pressuring it really hard yeah so I don't know because I if you if you have a flame berserker block like sitting on the back of the zone the yeah. solenoid just parks 16 inches from you and just shoot you yeah and my guns because you have your lose formation my guns lose a lot of value trying to counter shoot you yep yeah, and depending on where you deploy them, like Haspus come up these this flank, or I just like really overcommit over here. That's the thing is like there's there's a game there, um, but ideally, yes, you want your flame berserkers to go into these two zones. You want to cast your spell and you want to be scoring these two zones. Um, the Selenoi, like on whichever side they were on, punish that, and that was the plan. Uh, but it was a blunder to charge this marker. You just shoot it down. Yeah. You have enough shooting, you just shoot the marker. And, yeah, that's... But now I know that. I will yep. not forget that lesson. So, learn it. Um, yeah, basically never charge markers. Um, unless you're going to kill them that turn. Yeah. Um, no, that's, that's really fair. Hey, you know what? I got a question for you. Do you watch my content? I think I feel like you do. Uh, I've been you skim pretty it. bad. I've been pretty bad about watching content recently, just in general. But yeah. I do watch it when I'm like watching more content. Does does um, it provide I do, you? I do run it at like higher speed, um, because I, most of the time, like I don't, I don't need you to explain to me what's happening. No. So like the screenshots, and maybe if I miss something, I'll like watch that part. But like just the, I can kind of watch it at double speed and see what's happening in the turns and understand what happened yeah um does does my content provide you anything like i just started making content that i would like to see but i like there's times where i'm like does this actually do anything for stuff like people do like it i know that like i've gotten a lot of positive feedback where it's like hey what does this mean and i you know reply in a comment or whatever but yeah um no it's good uh your content's good like there's i uh, like i obviously like being able to watch the entire game which mm -hmm. is why mine is all recorded on tts because i don't have the ability to like record live games um i don't have like opponents near me and a you setup in my house I just like i not enough painted army is like just no way to do it right <laughs> yeah it's just do you not have the resources to do that thing i really um i was very much like Man, when I buy a place, gaming basement, and it pays off every single time. Oh yeah, I have a large gaming room and I have a I have a table, but like I I don't have the camera to set up and suspend um, to get the film. But most the majority of the problem is I don't have opponents. Like I am You're I am forty five. Yeah, I'm I am pretty rural at this point because I live on the on a sound. So like. You know, I'm on a small island, like, on an inlet from the ocean, and I'm five miles from the ocean, um, you need that to, I could get to by going need, straight across the sound. You need to convince your neighbor to play. <laughs> Be like, you play Conquest now. Right, like, um, so, but, yeah, so that's, that's, like, the big hurdle for me, is getting those games and in real life and i mean it's why yours are video are like shots instead of full videos because when you go to play at a store yeah I'm just... it, it's hard to set up and do that um but i'm not great at note taking and i'm not great at script writing those <laughs> just aren't really skills that i have so <laughs> i watch my videos and i just talk about what's going on and so, and a lot of the time I'm like, well, I don't know what I was thinking there. That was dumb. That was a blunder. You know? <laughs> yeah. No. It same same thing. Like it's, I don't get a ton of games in, so I'm like going over my stuff. It making the video helps a ton of just being like, well, that was a fuck up. <laughs> so I'm I'm glad I also do them for myself on top of like providing people, yeah, knowledge I mean, and you information. Have to. Um, because I don't know. There's times where I'm like. Man, do people enjoy these? I'm just like... Oh, yeah. I mean, I enjoy them. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I make... 
I started making content because the the competent Conquest Quest crew, like we're all competitive and we're all interested in worlds and um I'm not gonna be able to go this year. Like I already wasn't gonna be able to go before at Epticon, but then um being unable to participate did not help. Yeah, yeah, the having to drop for medical reasons was rough. Um like Skillin, um, the gentleman who I brought with me, he he loves you guys and he like wants to like get better and I'm like I'm happy because now that can improve our local scene because like you're only as good as your opponents and yeah the the competent crew are good opponents and that's why I'm like I'm a, I gotta play Ben more like yeah and I mean that's like we made the channel I mean I made the channel because I was like. I mean, there were a couple reasons. Um, being a playtester... Was one of them spite? <laughs> uh... <laughs> I'll, I'll just straight up ask the hard question, because I'll tell you honestly. Um, what, there was multiple reasons why I made Bonk Table. One of them was spite. <laughs> so, when I first... When I first, like, decided to make it... I, I will say, I probably played Nords out of spite. <laughs> a couple like the reason that like my first upload on the channel was spite was Nora's was probably and I, it was like half spite and half people like asking me right and i'm yeah. like look these things are good and they're like i don't believe you and i'm like i will demonstrate it um but i started the channel because as a play tester i'm almost always testing things that aren't the live game uh and i really wanted to play conquest like as a lie like the current version of the game and i wanted a reason to so instead of play testing you know this unit with this special rule or this or this like 10 point change or this 10 point change i was like i want to play games of the game the way it is so i don't lose touch with where things are right now uh, because that actually is really important when you're play testing to not lose touch with that yeah because you can get caught up in like future land and then then you miss stuff because if if you count if you're counting on a change to go through and it gets voted down then like and it doesn't happen or it you know doesn't fit lore or something like that and you've made a bunch of like other decisions or like a bunch of other recommendations within playtesting based on that sometimes like dominoes fall and stuff gets missed um, you know, like, if you're like, oh, this army rule that we had been testing makes this other unit okay, but then that army rule doesn't happen, and that unit's garbage, you're like, well, I forgot that they were garbage, because I've been testing them with an army rule that helped them. Yeah, that's... Um, that is so, and, so, like, part of it was that, and, but a big, the, one of the big things was just like we need to have these games and it's kind of what we did anyway we'd play and like we're doing now we debrief and talk about the game and i was like well why don't other people just see that right like that'll improve the game overall and i'm not out here trying to like keep secrets I no. <laughs> i'd much rather lose than i'd much rather lose a close game that was really fun and really hard than like curb stomp like tournaments like if i had gone to adepticon this year and played city states in their current state and easily won all my games because nobody had improved in the last year and i was just like oh i guess nobody like i guess it wasn't just people being surprised people just haven't like figured out how scoring works um, or something like that, I'd get bored with a game. Like, that's not gonna happen, obviously, but, like... No, you have Carl. <laughs> right. But, like, if people didn't improve, and I was... Like, if you play a game for a year, and you don't, and you're not challenged, you're gonna probably quit it. Yep. Um, it's... I always find it funny when people are like, oh, I want the easy button, oh, I'm gonna use, like, cheat codes or mods to make this easy the way I want it, and it's like... Yeah, but that's not really the game. Like, I, I get mods and stuff, but, like, I I remember being a kid. I remember playing Warcraft 3 and not being very good at all. 
and my dad was like, type in who's your daddy that made all your units invincible. And I won. Yeah. And, you know, I won. I enjoyed myself. I'm only like seven. But when I came back to Warcraft 3, when I was probably like 12 and had a little bit more like brain power, didn't use the cheat codes. I lost, yep. but eventually I got good enough that I could beat the campaign. Yeah. And, and then I went on Battleland and got the shit kicked in. So, um, <laughs> but like, there's so much more to a game when you have to play within its rules and system instead of just like, I don't know, wanting an I win easy button. Like, yeah, I, I mean, I value, like, this is a loss. Yeah. I have learned more from this loss than I have in my past 10 wins easy yep yeah you always you always learn like Some... substantially more from losses than you do wins like and that's part of it like i, I for me it's just about getting better i yeah. just i just really love improving at things and once i feel like if i'm at the pinnacle of my ability to do the thing i'm no longer interested in the thing no. so i yes. I'm out here and I would much rather give everybody as much information as I can so that they can all bring it back to their groups and those people can all play and test and find new things and then beat me with them and then I learn new things because then I'm learning new things and that's all that I want. Like, all I want is to get better. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I, I agree with you there. Like, one of, one of the reasons I made uh, Bonk Table was that um, people were like saying stuff on the Discord, and I was like, "This, this doesn't make any sense. What do you mean? Like, this is not how any of my games have been going at all." And I just started making game, like you know, bad reports of my games to be like, "Hey, this is how my game's going. This is what I'm finding. Like, here are my results. Here's the work." Like, yep. Like, I do math for a living. You gotta show your work because if you fuck it up or it goes to court, someone has to see all of it. And. Um, your like in in my line of work your notebook does go to court eventually <laughs> so you better have taken good notes yeah yeah that's that's fair i what? note taking has never like been a tool of mine like i've never been good at it i was always the person who like i i was a straight b student because i would like 98 percent all of the tests and do the absolute minimum amount of homework that i could do oh man and i <laughs> My, uh, math teachers got so mad at me because I was the kid that never showed their work. Oh yeah, that's that's the, the math teachers right like there. answer this question on the board, and I would like walk up and write the answer, and they would be like, "How did you arrive at that answer?" And I was just like, "And you know, I'd say it quickly," and they're like, "But why didn't you write those steps down?" And I'm like, "Cause that's a waste of everybody's time," and then I'd sit back down. <laughs> <laughs> I was always snarky. <laughs> yeah, I'm very much the, like, I'm pretty sure I was, like, a C minus, maybe a C plus on some good days student. Like, I had to take notes. I had to, um, to be, like, decent at a thing. I had to, like, master the thing. So, like, it was a lot of just, like, over and over and over and over again. I had to show all my work so I could go backtrack and figure out where I went wrong. Um, people, like... People can figure it out pretty easily after a while that I have dyslexia, so it's like, okay, I gotta make sure all my shit is correct. Hey, me too. Oh, sweet. Um, yeah. So yeah, like I wrote out every step, and then like as, like in my field of work, like you have to write out every step. I had, um, I had a student surveyor, not sorry, not surveyor. He was an engineering student, uh, do survey work for me, and he like gave me a number, and I'm like, okay. How'd you get that? And he's like, I did the math. I'm like, that's not a, that's not an answer, dude. Show me <laughs> how you got that. He's like, I did the math. I know it works. I'm like, that doesn't matter. Everyone here can do the math. Our numbers are different. I want to know what you did to get that number. And he refused. And it was like, dude, I can't take that number. Yep. Like my, I'm like, here, look. And I pulled out my field book and I'm like, Here's all the equations, like baseline equation, numbers provided filled in, calculation performed, and result. Yeah, I did the math and showed all my work, so when someone looks at this, they know how I got it if there's any mistakes. Like, 
Yep. I'm not infallible. I make mistakes. But you can go yeah. through my work and find out where it was. And yeah, and so it was like, I, I can't take your number, dude. So like, we're going to be... Hell, just money. on the Discord, I have to like show my work for people now. I'm like, okay, it's this <laughs> many attacks, it turns into this many hits, it turns into this many saves, into this many resolve fails. Here's your total number. And then I'll do that for like the first one. Oh, and then boy. I'll just write the final number for like the next ones, and they're like, "What happened?" And I'm like, "Oh, you gotta do it again." I did this. It's the same formula, man. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saving a lot of typing. I'm yeah. on my phone. <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of like, I'm in a truck or I'm on my couch, and it's like, yeah, I do this all through the phone. <laughs> it's very rare that I'm sitting at my desk anymore. Um, yeah, but I'm. It's just, it's a lot of just like, show your work. Like these are results I find. This is how I'm playing the game is another one, because, like, when I play newer players, they make a ton of mistakes, and, like, we'll go over it again, and I'll be like, I'll only give them, like, three to four things to improve upon when they failed, yeah. like, 15 to 20, because it's like, I'm not going to give it all to you. You can work on these, and we'll come back and play another game. Like, you know, after we yeah, play I mean, a bunch I'll, of games, you'll get there. I'm not worried. Yeah, like, I'll tell, I'll tell you everything you did wrong, but I will also tell you the correct thing to do Me. when you're trying to get better is find one thing that was a big mistake and make sure you don't do it again probably gonna get better and then do that every game yep That's... like in this this game like don't charge an objective marker <laughs> What do you, you know, got? Like, it, what do you got? It's guns? Dumb. <laughs> it was dumb. Like, don't charge an objective marker that isn't gonna die that turn, or that you you know, if you're gonna for sure kill it before that unit activates the next turn, that's fine too. But like, don't do it without like never get tied up. You should never make two clash actions against an objective marker. It costs you way too much. Yeah, and that was and like sometimes you know whatever like maybe with a unit of Strix or some shit, but like generally speaking you don't want to be in that situation um so you can learn that and be like okay don't get hung up on objective markers because you got hung up on an objective marker and then you couldn't march your hellbringer where you needed to and then you had to spend a turn shooting the marker when you didn't really want to because you wanted to be shooting hoplites and like those things matter yeah all that stuff adds up and that's really what it boils down to it's that type of stuff and um, I could have saved that marker for later on in the game as well and just started to get work into your stuff. Yeah, like, you have too much shooting. I'm unable to, like, take it from you. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no reason, like, your ballista couldn't have walked up the middle and been like, shoot, shoot, shoot. And then, like, slowly started shooting into flanks of things that were coming into your zones over here. Yeah, and that's... A, a bit of that is also like this is the first time I ever ran the list, so it's like okay, oh for sure, gotta get but it. Like, but like it, I agree, the, yeah, it's the the same stuff though, mm. you know. And I'm I'm just picking on one thing, right? No, I but get that's it. the point is like you that's a big thing. It affects a lot of the missions, and it's a mistake that gets you in a lot of trouble. Like it's a lot of players in a lot of trouble because it's like well, all of a sudden you've taken a unit out of the game for two turns, so now that thing's not a threat. So I can focus all my attention here. Like, I, I was like, oh, I don't have to worry about these Flame Berserkers, so I can focus all of my attention on the other Flame Berserkers. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I was able to, like, Kill leverage them. that into winning a flank, right? Yeah. Um, and it doesn't take the better, you know, the higher the level of play, it the less it takes. Um, really, like... I don't know how to how to say this outside of like chess terms. That's fine. But the, I like, understand baseline chess. So like, the 500 elo players are going to lose to blundering pieces or units in this game. The thousand elo players are going to lose to blundering scoring opportunities in this game. The 1500 elo players are going to lose to blundering. A the 1500 plus players are going to lose to blundering actions. Yeah. Right. That's does that like does that make sense? Yeah. Like <laughs> um the mistakes are smaller but they are more significant at that level of play. Yeah. 
like every little thing gets punished more. Mm -hmm. So blundering, like, and obviously all those things are like cascading, right? Like a low level play, somebody just puts a unit in a bad spot and it just dies. It just gets charged for free. It like you charge out and then like. You know, you charge to do a couple of, like, people will be like, all right, I'm going to charge with my sealed temple, I'll march charge you and do, like, six impact hits. And it's like, okay, I took three wounds, uh, and fire. you're sitting in front of my army and there's nothing to counter charge me, kill you? Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, you spend 180 points to do three wounds. Hey, they're 190. 90. <laughs> Whatever, you know. Um... And then you're like, okay, well, that's not good. So then you stop doing that. And then you start, like, not... You you miss scoring opportunities. You don't take the points when they're free. You don't, like, realize when you can counter. Like, you mess up your stack a little bit so that, like, um, you can't safely march into a zone to deny a score. Things like that. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of, like, the next level. And then the last level is... Oh, uh... I missed, like two rounds of shooting and that put me far enough behind that I got tabled because I didn't have enough output to stop their units from doing their output and that cascaded into me losing a flank which cascaded into me getting charged in the flank and their, their like list turning on me and me being heavily outnumbered on the flank that I was like strong on um, wow I feel like uh, that happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and what it cost you was a couple of actions of shooting on this fire forge and a couple of actions on the these on the objective, yeah. and you just lose too much, and then like you, I was able to turn a flank, and this is a good example of that. Hmm. Uh, but it is one of those things where like you're a high enough level player, you didn't blunder a unit. <laughs> I I right? made you I made you fight for everything. That's for sure. Right, you didn't blunder a unit. You didn't miss scoring. It's it's not like you didn't. You know, you put your um, toe you the were terrain. in hindering terrain, and you had your toe in the terrain with like the best thing to be trying to score the zone. Yep. You know, like the those you didn't you didn't you didn't give away victory points. You didn't give away units. You just lost a couple of actions, and I didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, like the this uh, this hoplite unit was able to charge, like was able to clash on the charge. It's an action I didn't lose. You know, that's that type of stuff. Yeah, like I'm not like I feel like an um a lower skilled player would be like the chariots are super good and open. I'm like no, they're very good for what they're doing. They're yeah. strong. They fill in a role that city states really needs, yep. but they're not. They're not game breaking. They're just a no, very they're... good, solid regiment for this faction, and it really supports yeah. what they're trying to do. And it's like, no, yep. this is just a good thing for the faction. What they need, like, they're not right. OP yeah, at all. It's, it's just a tool that the faction needs. Um, but like, the hoplites held you off, mm -hmm. and the Selenoi held you off. Like, the. The regiments in the faction did their job, and the chariots, as the whole point of the faction as, um, has always been designed, is that hoplites are the core, and everything else supports them. And they do And that's... <laughs> yeah, and, and everything else supports them, and, like, you just really just hoping that the hoplites live long enough for you to overtake them, for you to win that game. Yeah, I... Like, I'm gonna go play a game in person with the same list using a couple proxies. Like, I have a better idea where to put my Hellbringer. I have a better idea what my fire or my flame berserkers are gonna be looking for. I'm, I have a better idea to use my ballista and fire forge. Like, this is a really helpful game because I made mistakes. What were a positioning blunder and an activation loss, so that I can not do them for the next game. Yep. Like, I'm glad I played this game before I threw it on the table. Yeah, I mean these are these are great games. These are great games to lose. Like, we're not playing for anything. Oh, what? Nobody cares about our YouTube credit. Like, <laughs> my my inter my internet money. <laughs> it's not even yeah. Like, let's <laughs> pretend there's internet money for conquest videos. Um, 
<laughs> well, it's play on tabletops, farming the shit out of everybody on that one. Yeah. But, but like, I think that I don't. I doubt that they make anything compared to what they do on like 40k videos. Uh, you know, I would have to like do a quick search. Why not? Let's play on tabletop. Oh, we can do it now. When you're stalking other YouTubers. <laughs> uh, 54,000 on a 40k video a day ago. Where is your... Oh, they have a members only. Look at that. Where is your conquest one? Uh, one month ago, 35. So they already are, what did I say, 54? 20k up? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they have a, a Tau versus World Eaters game eight days ago that's 138k. Yeah, like, they have one from two weeks ago, 114, one, eight, like, they're getting way more, like, way bigger numbers. Oh, one year ago, the one I actually watched was a Dweg Home. Oh, how to play sixty-three thousand views for conquest. That's a great. Play. That's actually a great video, by the way. I, I it, it ironically is how I learned, like first learned how to play conquest. Who did I learn how to play conquest? From? I think like, I watched two, uh, two plus tough like Doug's videos on conquest. First, <laughs> I, I watched like all of his lore videos. Yeah. yeah. So my buddy at Adepticon two years ago saw the game, and he basically he saw Wadru and he's like, "I want to play this game," um, and he's like, "But I like horses more." So we split the two player starter. That's why I'm a Spires player. Um, because I didn't built. really, I didn't really care. I was like, "Whatever, I'll play whatever." I, I usually have fun. I mean, I, if you like on my content, I play whatever. I play different lists all the time. Um, oh man, this is this is uh, this is a big hit. So, orcs versus Astra Militarum, three hundred and four k views seven months ago. Right next to it, Old Dominion versus Spires, twenty four. Ooh, was this on play on tabletop still? Yeah, yeah, just like scrolling through their channel, and like, oh, yeah. don't get me wrong, like. It's not 40k, right? But like, it's so much better of a game. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I one of the one of the stories I tell people of like why I don't play 40k. Um, coming from War Machine, when you could have a Warjack trample through a bunch of uh, dudes to get to a place and then fight something, um, changes you when you have a dreadnought that cannot um, just walk over. 20 guardsmen and then just punch a tank to death um because you were stuck in combat with the 20 guardsmen and you're killing for a turn yeah so like that was the level that was kind of like the immersion of the game broke down for me for 40k or i'm like um this thing is just a big war jack from war machine you just trample over these 20 guys take your free strikes punch that tank to death go to town yep. like uh, an actual dreadnought would not give a fuck about any of these like 20 guys fixing bayonets and be like sweet i don't have to waste bullets today yeah especially like depending on the addition of 40k they were literally immune to those guys yeah like, like back when armor was a thing they literally couldn't be hurt by strength three dudes yeah i played end of seventh beginning of eighth is what i played yeah seventh yeah, seventh had armor still, I think. Yeah, so that Maybe must not. have been my like beginning of eighth stuff. But it, like, it it was really, it was just kind of like immersion breaking. And on that level, it was kind of like, yeah, I'm good. I I played the game for probably like four or five months, and I was good not coming back. Um, like I have nothing against 40k. It's just it wasn't for me. Yeah. Conquest is more for me. Um, I can more realistically understand, like, because you could say the same thing, like, oh, well, it's a monster going through a regiment. It's like, yeah, but that's just like a mass of bodies. But it's like, well, you could say that thing about the robot. Um, it's like, yeah, but if you have, like, I don't know, eight stands of Gilded Legion, what are four per guy? You kind of just, like, start getting gummed up on bodies. 
Yeah. Especially, like, brutes and stuff. Like, one of the things... Like, I played a lot of Total War Warhammer, and, like... Yep. You can kind of get your um, brutes and stuff to run through things, but they're not really killing them, like, maybe as effectively as if you just let them, like, tear through stuff. Um, I know for Scarband, he's not a melee guy, he's actually just a chariot where you just keep him running back and forth into an enemy's line, (laughs) and just that's how you kill everybody, but that takes a lot of time, and that's kind of represented through the impact attacks itself, Yep. and, like, the trample damage, so it is there and is represented, but it's also like, man, if you hit a wall of enough guys, like, everything stops. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Like they're, they gum up the works. <laughs> yeah, like I, all that blood gets in the gets in the treads. All those arms and limbs and shit <laughs> just kind of gets in between the toes of the abomination. It's like, oh, I gotta pick <laughs> these out really quick. <laughs> so yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. That, that was that was kind of my thing. Like dreadnought twenty guys. Eh, it's going through abomination hitting like. 40 i'm like yeah no you're not going through that <laughs> yep <laughs> like three brute drones hitting like 12 yeah you're probably like crushing five of them to death for sure and then you're making your attacks but like there's some still kind of hanging around yep so yeah it was a little it was a little more immersive that i could like my brain could wrap around it compared to 40k yeah i mean it's just also like once you play alternating activations, it's hard to competitively play a game without them. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, I enjoy playing Old World from time to time, but it's a nostalgia trip, and it's not a competitive game. No, I... Like, it. that's a beer and pretzels game. Yeah. Like, because, like, if you want to win, I was actually, you know, I, I heard somebody say that. It's like, if you want to win at this game, you can win in it. Um, you can, like, there are, there are lists that are clearly imbalanced, and they're probably not gonna do anything about it, because that game came out in maintenance mode. (laughs) Yep. Yeah, there's, I don't know, there's a bit of me what wants to pick up an old world box and just, like, build and play it as kind of, like, yeah, as a nostalgia trip. But I also know I don't have a ton of time to go into other things and do other stuff so it would 100% be just the nostalgia trip also I heard chaos yep. is broken as fuck <laughs> um probably not oh the highest win the highest win rate is beastmen yeah, but chaos. they're only they're sort of chaos but they only have like 22 games played so it's probably just a couple of good players who are super hardcore um, otherwise, like, most of the armies are kind of... Uh, orcs and goblins are probably the best army. Mm. Yeah. But, but like, it's it's not. Um, monsters are too good. Uh, the thing about having toughness in your game is, as cool as it is to make units feel unique, and I actually said this to Stavro at Adepticon, He's like, yeah, but it makes the game take so much longer. I'm like, yeah, it's not worth it. It's And it's horrible from a balance perspective because it just makes games, like, wildly inconsistent. You're just you're just hoping to be lucky that you don't run into the person who decided to bring a bunch of high-toughness stuff or a bunch of low-toughness stuff if you bring, like, an- like high-strength things because then they're, you know, usually inefficient at killing, like, hordes. So it's just, it becomes very rock, paper, scissors very quickly. Yeah, like, I don't mind the, like, the lethality of Conquest, where it's like, tax, defense, resolve, wounds done. Like, it, it flows very quickly, what I do enjoy. Um, I believe I talked to Leandris about this, where it's like, he's like, you can design a very in-depth, like, like, attacks wounds tough like all that stuff but it just it just takes time and he's like doesn't want to do it i I mean i was actually saying that i feel like a lot of the regiments that are getting more pseudo actions like third actions or like actual third actions with the elemental rule or things like yeah or things like the giants um with their like pseudo third actions or free actions does slow down the game you know like 
let's say you want your expected damage from your Siege Otnar to be 12 hits. Why is it split up into, like, and some of them are split up into throwing the anchor? So, impact, clash, and anchor. Right, so... To effectively do 12 wounds across all three. Right. And, like, you could just have them have more attacks. I, yeah... And, so, and, like, he's not a good example, and I don't think he specifically should, but sometimes you should look at the thing and be like, is this special rule making the game better? Yeah. I... Because, like, I don't think Trample is. Oh, God. Um, Trample's just active aura of death, what does resolve, and it's just like, eh, aura of death had an issue. Yeah, ironically, I wanted Aura of Death to turn into Trample, like, before all of the changes to Aura of Death. Um, mm, yeah, I, I don't mind... Eh. Like I don't back mind in, where Like, before it Trample is, existed, yeah. back, in the, back in the day, when Aura of Death caused Resolve and was causing all these issues, I was like, it should just happen at the end of your turn. Yeah. Uh, because one of the biggest problems was people were feeling like... Just, or it should add hits to your clash action was another one I thought of. Like, when you perform a clash action, do each stand does X hits. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, but then why don't you just add to its attacks at that point? Like, there you go. Because it's not affected. And I mean, it. it's kind of like, it doesn't really change anything. You just add up a number. Yeah. Um. Going back to the C Yotnar and like splitting its effective like damage output to 12 across its three different ways to deal damage to you i feel like that's also a bit of like trying to get the theme of this regiment yeah. and what it's doing because it's like this is a this is a giant that throws its anchor and it's gonna throw it at you even if you're in melee with it because that's its whole stick like i i get yep. why they do that because it i do want, too you want it to feel that way and if your game's uh rules and abilities feel how that thing should activate and be does in like the lore um people really connect with that one of the one of the best stories that was ever written for war machine was um i believe it was macbeth versus kane 2 um macbeth has a mercenary force he's casting all his spells and like everything he does is literally an ability on his card so as you're reading the lore and you and you pick up his mini you know exactly what he's doing and you've seen how he does it because literally everything he does is something he he did in the lore and it goes back and forth and it's a really good story and ties in um his character so well like there's a moment where he's fighting this gunslinger and he has a spell here within five inches you can't shoot his guns and the gunslinger's like up close to him and he's like dude you can't shoot your guns i have the no shooty spell on and he's like fuck and then he teleports out of there yep <laughs> like such a great move that yeah he would have died but he's like mm -mm, they got the no shooty spell like, and and then you check out his card it's like got the no shooty spell like you're like this ties into the lore and the story so well yeah and and, and that's why like stuff like that is in there and like i'm pretty sure Stra oh, yeah. like stravos put that in just to be like hey it kind of has to be spelled like this because people when they play these regiments have to understand them from the lore as well because if they ever do a story where they focus on a sea yotnar like that they're gonna show off it doing impacts clashing and throwing its anchor into melee Just, yeah but it actually even if it ends yeah. up being 12 wounds <laughs> right um the issue is like sometimes that's not necessary like it is with the titans too for city states like they're you know, they're really, like, they're gonna do all these other things. Uh, Promethean obviously doesn't actually do damage, but uh, Festian I, does. I don't even know what the, the Promethean does anymore. Like, I'm just looking at that thing sometimes. I'm like, man. Uh, plus one clash and reroll sixes to hit, or plus one defense and reroll sixes on saves. Yeah, like, I know uh, it does that. Uh, it's just auras. getting it to do its thing has always been kind of tough. Yeah, uh, it's not quite... Uh, I think impacts are probably the biggest thing that both of the Titans need so that they can march charge and have a reasonable chance to cast their spells. Yeah, like, what is... Oh, I'm still on City States, would you look at that? Uh, Promethean. 
You are... Come on. Imp yeah, Impact 5. That's not good enough. Yep. I would... I would actually be okay if they just increased his priest level, like, to 6 or 7 or something. Yeah. I mean, I get, like, that's not how they work. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, if it's lore-wise, then yeah, I get that. Yeah, it's a, it's about the hits, and, but they could have more impacts. Like, they could easily... They oh. could easily give them each, like, two more impacts, because impacts don't have cleave, like, they're only on threes, it's not that big of a change. Yeah, you just... Um, they could also, like, not need four successes for their spells. They could make that three or even two. <laughs> and then they'd have a chance to cast them even without doing any impacts. Like, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of ways to go with it. But, I mean, Promethean's solid. Hephaestion's okay. Um, really? it's just always worse. It's always worse than Thyrene's. Like... Yeah, okay, that's fair. Um, it's, like... In a vacuum, it's a okay unit, but, like, it's just... Thyrians just do its job so much better. For the Thyrians on this stupid app. Uh, 190, so, Repestian. Ooh, 240, yeah. You're getting 16... No, you don't... Yeah, you do have a You're getting 16 of these attacks versus 10. You get that trend? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, also just compare Heffy to, like, Ice Yatnar, who, like has the same spell but doesn't have all these problems casting it oh and he's the same point no that's a c <laughs> yeah uh, it's he's 20 points, points more so who cares more. yeah he's yeah oh he has more attacks too he's at 14 yep yeah like heffy just really gets outclassed yeah the yeah. the problem is so part of the problem is herald of the forge god they don't want you getting too many hits off of Trident Strike, so he can't have enough attacks to actually make him effective. Um, there's kind of a bit of me what's just like, just say fuck it, <laughs> increase his points by twenty, and just let him do his thing. Or like, you know, even bump it up by thirty and be like, yeah, he's he's getting Trident Strikes off and just blowing people up, but he still is um like a monster, and you could still just like load unload into him. He's not. He's not that durable, it's, right? So like you can you can easily bring one of these things down, and I've yep. like I've killed them with like I don't know household knights, sealed temple, like shit like that, <laughs> like doing no cleave. Yeah, I mean just he's like, defense three, hardened one. Like he's not you put enough not unkillable. Yeah, it's just it's like dragon slayers. You just shove quantity of attacks into dragon slayers, they will die. Yep. You don't put quality attacks into them. Oh. Nope. So. Um, there's a bit of me that's just Unless like... they have precise shot. Oh, God. Fuck you, Bochosen. <laughs> Fuck, Alright, I have to sleep, though. Yeah, you're, you're making fun of Bochosen now. Okay, um, you have a good one? I think I'm gonna put up the entire four and a half hours of this and be like, there you go! <laughs> People gonna listen to our hour and a half after game chat. We're just... I mean, fair enough, like, they get a... They get a whole they podcast. They get a little mini, like, podcast out of it. Maybe you should split that off into a podcast, I don't know. Maybe I'll cut it. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for playing this game with me. I am ready for tomorrow. You get a good night. All sleep. right. <laughs> uh, you too. Good luck. Thank you. Good night, Ben. Good night. Mass.